This is Twit. We have the first confirmed major breach caused by heart bleed. It was reported a week ago that uh, it, there was a major breach reported. I didn't pick up on it and talk about it then because, you know, it's like, okay, another breach. It's getting to be the point now where that's just not very, it's not very exciting if there isn't anything to back it up. Well, there is something to back it up. So we, so it, it's a little more than a week ago, uh, it was announced that the, the nation's, the U.S.'s, second largest for-profit hospital chain called Community Health Systems. And they're like a, I mean, they've got hospitals that they manage, I think for some reason I'm remembering 18 states, through like 18 states throughout the Southeast, I think is sort of where they're centered. I kind of think, again, I, there's I, a lot of this just ran past me. I think like maybe they're based in Tennessee. I'm not sure. Um, but they had a major breach the names, addresses, and social security numbers, at least, that again, that hasn't been exactly specified, of 4.5 million patients. Now, of course, this is arguably more sensitive data. This is, you know, medical records breach than if it was just, you know, your PayPal account or something. What is significant and, and what just was revealed is that, and even now, this is still not through confirmed sources. They're keeping a lid on it during the during the investigation. But what has been determined through trusted inside sources is that the breach was made by hackers in China who used Heartbleed to to continually probe the servers, and in this case, it was a Juniper VPN server with that still had the vulnerable open SSL at, on its internet-facing VPN server that allowed them to obtain VPN credentials from some high-placed network administrator so those VPN credentials were captured wow. in through this well understood now Heartbleed buffer overrun uh, that is able to, as we've talked about it when we did our our podcast on Heartbleed, to take a snapshot of RAM that should not be available publicly. Um, they 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 found in in through who knows how many persistent snapshots. They found VPN credentials, then were able to use those to log in as this highly placed network admin as them and then got access into the internal network of community health systems. And through that, then exfiltrated this 4.5 million patients' uh, medical records back, back to China. So... Uh, and that is, interestingly enough, I mean, there, we, what we had to date was confirmed theoretical vulnerabilities. And even then, I mean, when this was first announced, there were people reluctant to say that you could actually do this. And and famously, <laughs> um, several... <laughs> Uh, uh, several, you know, there, there, there was a challenge put up and credentials were stolen. And the, those were the security certificates of the servers were stolen, which arguably was, you know, one level of problem. Although remember that, that the argument there was, even if you had the security credentials, you would still need to perform other, you know, Still, you still need to do other things like a DNS hijack in order to get people to go to the wrong IP in order to believe they were at the at at the site whose stolen credentials were being used. It's not enough just to have the credentials. Well, here, I mean, if you're able to get someone, you know, to, to exfiltrate VPN credentials, you as as this attack on community health systems demonstrates you're in you know you've got a you know a major attack against not visitors to their to a public server but you know into their internal network so for 
for what it's worth, this is sort of a, you know, th this would have been um, remote attackers identifying a persistently vulnerable heart bleed vulnerable server who just sat there patiently performing the heart bleed buffer overrun, pulling buffers of, you know, 64K of data over and over and over and looking at it. So if, if anybody is still running heart, and, and we do know, in fact, that there are, as last, last I heard, um, many, many months after this was publicly known, the number that I have in mind that I remember seeing was 330,000 publicly facing servers are still vulnerable to heart bleed. And they're things like this. They're th you know, machines in the closet that nobody really thinks about that are vulnerable. So, yikes. Yeah. It's, it's kind of also a proof of concept, right? Because the the, yeah. the real question about Heartbleed was, well, could you really get anything of value by polling again and again and again? Well, yeah, apparently it, so. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and many people who did it just got noise. Right. They just, they, they, they saw, well, there's nothing here. It's like, well, no, try again. Ask again. Knock on the door again. It did take them and, a while, and I, I, I bet you this has been going on since the original... Like they just Ex kind of let's get some more, let's get some more. Let's exactly. Get some more. Yeah. That's I mean, that's what you would do if you were determined, you know, in in the so-called advanced persistent threat sort of model, where you know you're determined to get in, and so you just trickle. You don't want to do too much because you don't want it to appear. You don't want anything to appear in logs, and one would hope that um you know intrusion pre uh, prevention or detection systems would be now looking for this very visible um, intrusion. This is something that any sort of IDS uh, in, in intrusion detection system could easily be primed to detect and and block, you know, block further connections from that IP and sound alarms. But in this instance, there was, you know, some VPN server in the back room that nobody thought about, nobody wow. was worried about, and it was enough to get people in. So, yeah, it's uh, definitely, a, as you said, a perfect d demonstration of a theoretical vulnerability. This is where, oh, yeah, this m maybe could happen. Well, bang, yeah. you know. It, 